Hi, everybody. This is Chris Campbell with the Food Institute, and welcome back to the Food Institute podcast. This week, we're speaking with Hannah Kosky, Head of Sustainability and Social Impact at Blue Apron. We're going to take a look at what the company is doing to fight packaging waste and other programs that are designed to reduce food waste as part of their overall ESG programs. But as always, before we get started, I'd wanted to take a moment to just thank our listeners for tuning in each week. And I'd also ask that you once again, share this with your friends, family, and colleagues. We still think that word of mouth is the best way to get this podcast out there to the world. So please, if you have the opportunity, make sure that you share it with your friends and family. So thank you for that. Additionally, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this week's episode, and that is Mazars. Mazars in the U.S. provides food and beverage companies with the specialized expertise required to venture further in this dynamic industry environment. The more than 200 leading food and beverage manufacturers, distributors, restaurants, and importers who call them their trusted advisors are a testament to their deep market knowledge and global capabilities. In recent years, sustainability has evolved substantially in the food and beverage marketplace. Good corporate governance and social responsibility are not simply rooted in doing the right thing. They also bring with them performance benefits. Mazars helps companies address their sustainability strategies from design and embedding to reporting and assurance. They can give you a competitive edge to maximize results. And for more information, please visit www.mazars.us slash home slash services slash sustainability. And as always, make sure to check the description of this video for a link directly to that web page. All right. So with that all said, I want to welcome Hannah to the show and welcome. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. And I think the best way to open this up would maybe just give a little bit of a background about your professional career and then also about Blue Apron for any of our guests who may not be familiar. So can you open up with that, Hannah? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad to be here. Blue Apron was founded in 2012 and offers chef-designed recipes that empower home cooks to really embrace their curiosity and challenge their abilities in the kitchen. So our subscribers receive a box shipped to their homes, complete with everything they need to prepare those recipes, including all fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step instruction. So I've been with Blue Apron since 2015. I joined as a member of a team that was dedicated to building out our direct farm sourcing program, which is a really critical component of our supply chain. I've held numerous roles since, all with a sustainability bent. My responsibilities have ranged from helping to create our ingredient and animal welfare standards, helping to establish our operational food waste reduction program, leading produce and grocery procurement, and then most recently, heading up all of our corporate social responsibility efforts. In my current role as head of sustainability and social impact, I coordinate and collaborate across multiple functions to make progress on ESG issues. That includes launching our employee-led environmental and social impact initiative, Aprons for All, and its supporting team. Right now, we're prioritizing food waste reduction, packaging sustainability, and responsible ingredient sourcing. And then we're also always evaluating new and innovative opportunities to make progress towards our Apron for All goal of advancing food equity. And that's a perfect segue into the first question I'd like to talk to you about. And I think that would be those new sustainable packaging goals that Blue Apron recently released. So I was wondering if you could explain what those goals are a little bit for those who may not have read through the press release or might not be familiar with what Blue Apron is trying to do with your packaging currently. Yeah, sustainability has been a part of Blue Apron's DNA since day one. So from reducing food waste to maintaining our really efficient, streamlined supply chain and also prioritizing packaging sustainability. You know, in the last several years, we've been really honored to be recognized by the industry for improvements in our packaging sustainability, everything from reconfiguring our packaging system to reduce the use of frozen gel packs and corrugate. And then we also became the first major meal kit company in the U.S. to launch and only send drain safe gel packs, which allows for that water and then also the gel pack exterior to be recycled. We decided to take this commitment one step further, and our goals were a really important way that we could put a stake in the ground. So we're very proud to be the first major meal kit company in the U.S. to announce these time-bound targets around packaging goals for our meal kit boxes. These are to achieve 100% recyclable, compostable, or usable packaging by the end of 2025, and then also to use at minimum 75% post-consumer recycled content by weight by the end of 2025. So we think that this is a really important way that we can be transparent, that we can hold ourselves accountable to continuously improving our environmental footprint by helping to contribute to a more circular economy. So I think when you look around the food industry, you'll see a lot of companies are making these kinds of sustainability efforts, but they also are difficult to meet, especially when you have an existing uh, program or, you know, even just business that already has entrenched itself in delivery and using specific packaging. So I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about how you plan to meet these goals and, you know, some of the steps that you're taking as a company to really, you know, take those goals and, and turn them into something concrete. Yeah, our our strategy to meet our packaging sustainability goals is three-pronged. So first, we're looking to avoid packaging whenever possible. 
Second, to reduce the amount and weight of the packaging that we do use. And then third, to improve its sustainability, specifically by designing for recyclability and using post-consumer recycled content. Doing all of that also while never compromising food safety, ingredient quality, or shelf life, um, because we don't want to contribute to waste from reduced shelf life issues. So in our operations, we actually have a dedicated cross-functional team and a packaging engineering lab that helps to drive our progress. We've built a proprietary packaging specification system, and that helps us right size every customer's box and the packaging materials so that we are only sending what is absolutely necessary to keep ingredients safe and in high quality. And then we're also always finding and testing new innovations and materials in our lab to enhance sustainability. And we do that in partnership with our food safety and quality assurance team. And then what's really exciting, often also with collaboration from our packaging suppliers too. Um, we also know that packaging sustainability is very system and infrastructure dependent, particularly when dealing in recyclability. So we strongly believe that we need to engage with the right industry partners and participate in some broader collective industry efforts to improve recycling education and to enhance that recycling infrastructure and then maintain a really important priority of educating our own customers and providing them with easy to follow recycling guidance so that it's as easy as possible for them to recycle at home and to minimize the amount of packaging that's ending up in the waste stream. So we've made some really great strides, um, you know, based on an internal audit of our 2020 data, we actually estimate about 85% of our packaging by weight is already recyclable and uses about 40% post-consumer recycled content. And I know that sustainability is not just going to be what's being shipped directly to, you know, the consumer. We also have uh, your fulfillment center operations, which are also going to produce some level of waste. But I did see, I believe on your website that between 2017 and 2019, you're actually able to reduce waste in those fulfillment centers by about 50%. So I was wondering if you could explain a little bit about the project there, how you're able to reduce those inputs and also, you know, any kind of projects that might be ongoing to further reduce waste at the packaging slash fulfillment center side of your business. Yeah, absolutely. So reducing food waste in our operations is a critical company priority. And I'd love to give some background on how we got to that 50% reduction um, accomplishment. So it's really started for us with the saying, you manage what you measure. We decided to double down on our commitment to food waste reduction in 2016. And that's when we decided to become the first meal kit company to join the US Food Lost and Waste 2030 champions. And once we did that, our first step was to establish our baseline. So we had a general sense of how much food we were losing and how much we were sending to food bank partners. But with that commitment, we decided to adopt a standardized data tracking system across all of our filaments and centers. At the time, that was New Jersey, California, and Texas. Once we had that in place, we were able to really easily identify areas of opportunity and I think made the really smart company decision to actually dedicate an entire department specifically to reducing food waste and implementing food waste solutions focused on source prevention, diversion, you know, such as through donations to our food bank partners. And I really think that that dedicated focus and that ownership was a huge signal of commitment to our employees and a really big step in having those advocates who could then work cross-functionally to make food waste a part of everybody's job function and a priority for everyone. And that buy-in has just been critically important to our success in dramatically cutting operational food waste. And then we obviously continue to track and analyze data for new opportunities and solutions to tackle some of that harder to reach fruit. Um, and that buy-in is really key to our continuous improvement. And you mentioned that you joined the U.S. Food Loss and Waste 2030 Champions, I believe in 2016. So I'm just wondering, you know, what drew you to that organization and group? And, you know, why did Blue Apron decide that this was the organization slash program that they wanted to be a part of when it came to food waste and, you know, improving sustainability? Yeah, so we firmly believe that it's important to have targets and aspirations. It, it it's important to have something to strive towards. So when we joined the U.S. Food Lost and Waste 2030 champions, we saw it as a way that we could not only set that aspiration, set a goal, but also do it in the company with so many other industry leaders who are aspiring to do better and really be a part of contributing to that growing movement. So food lost and waste, we know, is such a critical issue, um, both because of its environmental implications. So it comprises about 4% of the U.S.'s greenhouse gas footprint, but it also has really significant potential social impacts. So 
tackling food loss and waste is a way that we can not only help the planet, but then also address the dire need for immediate hunger relief and help to feed the estimated, I think, 40 million people who are experiencing hunger in this country. So it's a powerful movement. It's one that the U.S. Food Loss and Waste 2030 Champions Program, we felt like really harnessed and brought people together around. And we knew that we could help contribute and make food waste a priority, which is why we decided to become champions as well. Yeah, it's great. And it's one of the things I learn more as I talk to food industry executives and just members of the food industry in general. Uh, when it comes to ESG, there seems to be this level of cooperation and camaraderie that you don't always see when you have businesses competing with each other. So I do think that's a great thing. And the program itself is awesome. Like you said, it really is addressing a critical need. And I'd like to shift gears a little bit here and kind of talk more about the consumer. And I think one of the things you did when you created these new sustainable packaging goals, you started to address one of the negatives that have been associated with meal kits, which is waste. And like I said, I'm glad you're addressing that. Uh, however, I do think that meal companies might be fighting a bit of an uphill, uh, uphill battle considering that you know a lot of consumers really do relate meal kits with waste. So I was wondering if you can kind of speak to that a little bit and talk about how you know Blue Apron's ESG initiatives are really trying to confront that consumer sentiment that might be, you know, I don't want to say negative, but might be skewing towards negative a little bit when it comes to meal kit programs in general. Yeah, of course. So we really prioritize assessing our environmental impact across our value chain from the very start of the cycle in how we write recipes and how we procure our ingredients all the way through how those make it to our customers' homes and how they're consumed. We strive for that holistic approach and always want to be mindful of trade-offs. So I think an interesting example that's sort of develop some growing discussion in the industry is around these trade-offs between packaging and food waste. You know, the latter often having a more negative environmental impact. Packaging plays a really important role in keeping food safe and protects it from damage, contamination, spoilage, all of which might otherwise ended up in the trash, rotting, emitting methane in a landfill. And there was actually a study done by the University of Michigan for which Blue Apron provided input that suggested that, you know, pending certain assumptions, of course, uh, cooking a meal kit can actually reduce a person's carbon footprint by an estimated 25% compared to preparing the same meal from ingredients purchased at a grocery store, even after taking into account that packaging. So I agree with you. And this is something that we take really seriously. And we know that there's a tremendous amount of work to do and, and always opportunity to do better. And we strive for that continuous improvement and know that we have to walk the talk. So that's part of why it was so important for us to set those sustainability targets um, to help hold us accountable and to communicate that commitment. And we really do want to make sure that we are always looking at that end-to-end -end view when making these sustainability trade-offs. So what kind of messaging would you provide to a customer that might have reservations uh, you know, about waste connected to a meal kit company? How would you exp uh, explain that Blue Apron is trying to address this? Is there a pitch that you would send to them? So, you know, to any customer concerned about waste, I would first say that I get it. You know, as a sustainability professional, I'm actually thrilled that there is this awareness and that customers are helping to drive these conversations. You know, we always welcome them at Blue Apron. Um, we always strive for that transparency and that continuous improvement. So we always have to assess, like I said, the trade-offs between packaging needs, sustainability, food waste, food safety, and make those informed decisions for optimized good outcomes. And that holistic approach is really important and something that we take into consideration all of our business decisions. And I think where we can really work with our customers is to, to, to work through those trade-offs together um, so that we are making the decisions that optimize good outcomes for everyone. And I'd like to actually draw back on something you spoke about earlier in this conversation. And I'd just like for you to explain a little bit more about Aprons for all the, for people that may not be familiar with the program. Can you explain what it is and what you're trying to accomplish with it? Yeah, of course. So Aprons for All is our corporate environmental and social impact initiative, which we launched in April of this year. And we are extremely excited about it builds off of all of the sustainability work that we have done to date. But what it does is really concretize a focus on food equity and this belief that we have a responsibility to make our brand vision, which is better living through better food, a possibility for everyone. So corporate to aprons for all is this commitment to using our power as a company to help address systemic barriers to health and well-being. And after a lot of work across the company, we actually landed on three key ways that we think that we can achieve that. So continuing to provide immediate relief to hunger in our communities by continuing our weekly food donations to local food banks and partnering with and supporting some value-aligned nonprofit organizations. But we're also looking to address the root causes of food insecurity. You know, we know that only addressing immediate hunger is a Band-Aid at best and can perpetuate some disinvestment at worst. So we wanted to be sure to prioritize solutions to make progress towards long-term food equity and specifically ensuring economic security. So 
for us, um, which I, I love most about this program, is that that starts with our employees. You know, we're always striving to build an inclusive workplace that creates that long-term economic security and with that, that long-term food security and food dignity. So that's a really critical part of Aprons for All as well. And then last, with Aprons for All, we're recognizing that there are a lot of intersections between food equity and climate and environmental impact. And so we also maintain a focus on managing our environmental and social impacts as a business, but trying to keep equity as that lens and making sure that we are always first recognizing our impact in our immediate communities of operation. Um, The last thing that I'll say about Aprons for All that I think is unique and really exciting is that it is employee-led. So with the initiative, we actually also kicked off a more than 30-person volunteer impact team that is responsible for helping to ideate, socialize, plan, implement all of these different ways, these activities, programs, or partnerships that will help us make progress towards these social impact goals. This is exciting because it means that when we finally land on our Aprons for All roadmap um, and when we continue to iterate on that roadmap over time, it's going to reflect the wants and the priorities and the values of our employees. And we're really excited to continue to give update on that in the years ahead. And we'll definitely be listening along and taking a look for those updates. But I think another aspect that we should talk about is just how to track these goals. So obviously, I think everyone agrees that ESG goals are important, but companies also need to follow through and not just send out those hollow messages. And you spoke to this a little bit earlier, but I'd like to kind of dive into it a little bit more. And I was just wondering, how does Blue Apron track and ensure these goals are met over uh, time after a commitment is made? Absolutely. So I couldn't agree more. Words without action are completely meaningless. So When we defined our immediate sustainability priorities, we also made the decision to establish working program teams with shared responsibility along with myself as head of sustainability and social impact, and then also oversight from our CEO. And I think that is so critically important. I report to our CEO directly, and she ultimately has view into all of the commitments that we have made from a sustainability perspective. You know, once we established teams, our first course of action was then to define our key performance indicators and our targets. And again, being able to actually measure progress was something that was critically important to make sure that we were moving in the right direction and actually driving a positive environmental impact. So with these defined systems and processes and ownership and also that visibility around those key performance indicators in place, we now have quarterly check-ins so that we can assess roadblocks, successes, et cetera. And we do that cross-functionally, bringing all stakeholders to the table. And then we're also repeating internal audits annually so that we can track our progress. And this will actually be the first year that we'll be able to do so following up on some of our 2020 audits. And I think it's great that the CEO level is involved and then all the way down to, you know, the working groups made up of employees. But I'm wondering, do you have like a specific program or regulatory guidelines that you follow as well? Anything outside the organization that would help you kind of stay on track with some of these uh, goals? Yeah, we're, we're always evaluating and looking for those ways to amplify our commitment and uphold that transparency and hold ourselves accountable. And a lot of that is through sort of reputable third party organizations and programs. And that really does vary by our sustainability um, sort of pillar. But we're excited to continue to assess those. And as we continue over the next several months and years to put these various stakes in the ground um, to amplify those commitments through these different programs and guidelines. And this question might be a little more esoteric, but I was just wondering, you know, in your own mind, what does success look like for Blue Apron when it comes to these ESG goals? What's the end game and where do you think the company could go, uh, you know, as you follow all of these different pathways towards the environmental, social, food waste, all these different issues that you're confronting? What does success look like for Blue Apron at the end of the line? Yeah, I I love this question. And I think part of why I love being in the sustainability space so much is because success really never, ever stops at meeting our goals and it will never stop for Blue Apron at meeting our goals. You know, progress on ESG is very much a journey um, and there's always opportunity to learn and that is something to which we are deeply committed. And then there's always this chance to assess the work ahead and to push ourselves forward to be better and to be a positive example. And I think leading in the industry and continuing to be authentic and genuine in our commitments and hold ourselves accountable and then always doing that learning is really how we're gonna define success. And I love that idea that, you know, the progress never ends. And with that in mind, what's next for Blue Apron as far as sustainability goals? Are there any other projects you're looking towards with the second half of 2021 already upon us? Anything that's coming up that our uh, audience should know about? 
So we're currently in deep planning phase with our Aprons for All team and really excited to announce what that roadmap is going to look like. And then again, just continuing to always assess as the environment changes and the industry and the times, what we can be doing differently, what we can do better and looking at that impact across all of our production so that we can hold ourselves accountable. Well, that's excellent. And I really appreciate you spending the time with us, Hannah, to teach us a little bit more about Blue Apron's ESG goals. And I was just wondering, you know, if anyone wants to follow along with Blue Apron uh, and the goals that you're setting and also, you know, basically achieving, where should they go? Any kind of website or anything that they should follow so that they can stay up to date with the latest news? Absolutely. So they can, of course, go to blueapron.com and then I would direct them to our blog, Extra Helpings, where you'll find a lot of great content on all of our aprons for all and various associated sustainability and social impact initiatives. All right, Hannah, once again, I really want to thank you for spending the time with us today. um, And it was really excellent to speak with you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the opportunity. We enjoyed being here. So once again, I want to offer up my thanks to Blue Apron and Hannah Kosky for the lively discussion on ESG principles and also to Mazars for sponsoring this episode. But until next time, this is Chris Campbell signing off. Mm -hmm.